Hey y'all, Josh here for Drum Set Confessional. Uh, just reacting to one of the stories. It's a short little paragraph, but advice for somebody who's three weeks clean from opioids. And by the way, I just made a whole like four minute video about this, but I forgot to say one thing. So I'm gonna lead off with that. I can remember being at the groups, being in the meetings and you know, having a week or two under my belt, a real week or two, and just no one really, God, it's not, everybody's different. Not that I needed everybody to bend over backwards to celebrate me, but I needed some like positive reinforcement. And I didn't really get that there. Now that's not the fault of the meetings as a whole. These are just like the particular meetings that I was at. But I, I can remember this old gentleman being like, three weeks, psh, got a long road ahead of you. And while that's true, it's not what I needed to hear. I remember hearing from people that are 16 years or shit at that time, 16 months sober just seemed overwhelming. Oh, I'll never get there, which was on me. That's not on them. That's on me. And I let it feel so overwhelming. So I want to lead off by saying congratulations. First and foremost, you are in the first steps of getting out from underneath this thing opiate addiction. I mean, I feel like I have this unique perspective from looking into the eyes of like the darkest thing and ancient, awful evil uh, that robs you of everything. And I don't mean to be like over dramatic, but that is what it feels like. So I say congratulations in your first steps. But yeah, three weeks in, you're in the thick of it. I presume you don't want to go through that first two weeks again. I'm, I'm sure it wasn't pleasant. I'm sure it's not pleasant right now. Um, I know for me, you know, it took, and don't let this overwhelm you. The last thing I want to do is do exactly what ha happened to you, happen what happened to me in the meetings. I don't want to do that to you. But I remember it took, I don't know, like a year to even part, begin to put together, God, I can't talk to that, put together who I am. Finding out I still enjoy movies. I hadn't watched movies really in years because dope had taken over everything. Music, movies, baseball, everything I loved was gone. Sex, gone, doesn't even exist. Um, it took a long time to piece back together what I am, but you're, it's a unique opportunity. You get to become the person you always wanted to be, that person that when you're high and you watch other people and you just think and feel like, I'll never be like that. Seeing somebody just like with a big smile on their face, enjoying time with their kids or enjoying time with their family. I remember thinking, I remember people in my own family thinking, I'll never be like them. And uh, what a unique opportunity, you know, when I cleaned up, I mean, I, I wouldn't suggest this to anybody, but it happened to work out. One, if I'm dredging for positives here, one of the opportunities that was gifted to me was kind of not a clean slate, the most dirty, dark slate. But when you start to wipe away the mud, you get to piece yourself back together and really be the person that you want to be. And, I don't think it's like too self-congratulatory to say when I, you know, when I look in the mirror, I like myself and that wasn't true for a long time. So three weeks clean, we'll get into a little bit of more like the administrative stuff. Obviously you want to stay the course. You do not want to pick up. That's what, that was a popular saying when I was in the meetings, don't pick up, don't pick up. If you feel like you're going to use, if you feel like it, sometimes it comes on and it's not this powerful, it's just this kind of like devil may care, blase attitude attitude towards sobriety, like, ah, eh, whatever, let me just see. Don't do it. Don't even give it a second of your time. And if you're really feeling the pull and it's not subtle, it's tangible, it's thick. Oh my God, I need the fucking drugs. I need the thing that makes me feel whole. Talk to somebody. Talk. My whole life would be different if I just talked and was honest. See, I used to use two and three weeks sober as some kind of like thinly veiled, you know, I was trying to make myself sound like this was an old problem. You know, well, yeah, I was a junkie two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks clean, I'm all good. You know, I got a drink in my hand, a fucking cigarette, I got Coke around my nose, like, and everybody's like, yeah, man, two weeks, great. A real two weeks, three weeks sober is nothing to scoff at, nothing to turn your nose at. It's something to say congratulations to. It's a fucking huge deal. And I want you to save your life. You said you're going to be at the L.A. show. Make sure you come and holler at me. I'll be out and about. I'll probably be in the parking lot doing my high knees and butt kicks. Hopefully be a little bit thinner by then. That's the last show. God, I feel like I'm dropping weight already. This tour shit is ass kicking. Um, I think that's about it, man. I wish you all the luck. And just, you know, 
if you feel the urge, talk. Even if it goes against like every fiber of your being, right? It feels wrong to do it. Pick up the phone, go to somebody's house. Talk. They don't even have to be another junkie, by the way. Talk to anybody. I'm feeling like I'm going to lose. It helps to talk to other junkies. We are each other's people. We got to look out for each other. That's what this whole thing is, is me trying to look out for my people because I know my people looked out for me. So get in touch with us at Drum Set Confessional. Get in touch with the community we're trying to put together. There are people out there. There are ears out there that want to listen and understand. I'm one of them. But don't pick up. I'll see you in L.A.